for its 19 years of rise and decline. You've declined almost to nothingness now. And, and it is, it's a pathetic group from the days of their arrogance and pomp and glory. Look how they look pathetic in front here. In front of a center that their brand center for change. They look very pathetic here. It's a worn people has been from the past. So I had to give them the shout, shout out today. So they're celebrating 19 years. True when the rain is falling. I was in Zila the other day and all them little fine road, even we would call it a little dark, everything well paved and all of that, humps and everything. And these they just come and supplying nobody paying attention. I do hope that they will look into that. The second thing is concerning a topic yesterday that you had. There are many policemen and as they say custom officers do. People go into the jobs and they're willing to throw the line and what they were taught in the training school, they go to put it out there. But when they exercising their duty, you pull in somebody. They do. They are corrupt. If they don't have big fat bank accounts in China or wherever it is, they are corrupt. That is what they are about. And for those of you who don't know, Kwame McCoy has uh, had his U.S. visa revoked as well after it came to light that he was soliciting sex from a little boy, a 14-year-old schoolboy. Those were serious allegations leveled against him. And on this tape here, of course, he denied that it's him. But all of you know that that's him. But he denied that that's not him. And listen to this here. And I'm just saying this to... It could not be 19 anniversary, the 19th anniversary of achievements. Because when this started off, people were hopeful that they would become the third force. They laid out an agenda for Guyana at that time. They said, we are fighting for multi-ethnic Guyana, lofty goal. They said we had fight for efficiency in government, lofty goal. Fight against corruption, lofty goal. People over time embrace. When you would have applied for public assistance mm -hmm. and you got the first six months, they're putting you up to the board and they're making an overnight decision that, okay, you fit enough to make it on your own now. So every day you go in the market, it's a, it's a price up. Is a five hundred dollar of garden. No matter how you're working for a salary garden, if it's making it, it is tough. It's yeah. garden faith. And they and they're dead. telling you, paying a normally this is supposed to be till the child is at least eighteen or probably finish school. Joseph mm. is home in London, no, and George John. So. But be, be also be for me alone, so I say you could probably come in the daytime and check before five. Uh, in the daytime, somebody might come, my cousin might come in the night to sleep. Or they might come from the then I don't know. I guess so though, but it will probably be better in the daytime. Before five. So that's why I, I'm telling you now, so you can possibly make time for that. I don't, I'm not sure about data. I gotta watch it. But I don't. Welcome back to the flight. Hit that subscription button, buddy, and stay updated with everything that's trending in Guyana and the diaspora. Thanks. The future. Vision for Guyana. Not that they said anything, they plan to do that. They plan a lot of things. So they celebrated with pomp and ceremony as is often the proclivity of this party, their 19th anniversary. And it could not be 19 anniversary, the 19th anniversary of achievements because when this started off, people were hopeful that they would become the third force. 
they laid out an agenda for Guyana at that time. They said, we are fighting for multi-ethnic Guyana, lofty goal. They said, we had fight for efficiency in government, lofty goal. Fight against corruption, lofty goal. People over time embraced them. They made lots of promises. Sugar workers who are promised better, a better life. Young people who are promised a better life. Rice farmers who are promised a better life. They flew in to meet with the miners of Maruri Mountain and promised them a better life. And what happened? The party gained support. And then today, it's a shadow of its former self. So after you were celebrating 19 years, and now you're weaker than even before, it's 19 years of rise and decline. You've declined almost to nothingness now. And, and it is, it's a pathetic group from the days of their arrogance and pomp and glory. Look how they look pathetic in front here. In front of a center that their brand center for change. They look very pathetic here. It's a worn people has been from the past. So I had to give them the shout, shout out today. So they're celebrating 19 years of duplicity, 19 years of betrayal of the people of this country, 19 years of corruption, of incompetence, of lack of vision. They don't have a plan as yet after 19 years. They plan to launch a plan for the future. They don't have a plan. 19 years you're celebrating, nothing documented is yet. So what are you really celebrating? And they're celebrating 19 years of lies and broken promises. And so the building that they launched, Center for Change, the change message was working in 2015. You remember, they, they're so moribund that they got to go back to these old messages. But a message can only have resonance in a particular political or socioeconomic context. Their message is worn flat. And what are you going to change from? So the first thing, they got to change from their corrupt ways. So they got Cathy Hughes in the center of change must say, I shall not give myself contracts in the future. I will not do that. So in the center for change, Patterson must be exhibit number two and say, I will not collect gold bangles paid for by the taxpayers any, any longer. And then deny that I got the gold bangle. I never wore the gold bangle and we found you in a picture with the gold bangle. So, uh, Nigel Hughes will say, I will no longer say that my boss's ex-son's interest will prevail over Guyana's interest. And I will now exit the lucrative contract I have with Exxon um, there. Trotman, yeah. Well, I don't know what Trotman will say. Uh, he'd say, in future, I will never sign an agreement like this. What are they going to change from? Really? And this is 19 years of this. They're celebrating. And he talks about the new republic. Now, it could be... Um, I don't know where he got this new republic. You know, these are slogans in the U.S. In the early part of the 20th century, there was a magazine called the New Republic that was former left-leaning magazine. Then a, a couple hundred years ago, um, Thomas Paine wrote about the possibility of a new republic. But what new republic he wants? A new republic of it basically nepotism because I see he and his wife standing here nepotism a new republic of corruption a new republic of double standards of conflict of interest what new republic it's sloganeering and in this new republic 
high level of respect, transparency, and accountability, economic and social justice, slogans. Was Kathy Hughes thinking about economic justice? Why they didn't focus on the 2,000 to 3,000 new contractors rather than her getting contract in her own ministry? They didn't think about incubating new contractors, including of every race. Where were the young people getting opportunities, scholarships? They didn't think about social justice for young people when the ministers were hogging the scholarships for themselves, or they took a 50% increase in their sal salaries and had foreign medical insurance paid for by the state. They didn't think about that. Where the economic and social justice? It's slogans again. So this center will be a total waste of time and they should be exhibits of how not to do, run government. They should put them up there and they should sit there every day and the slogan will be over them, how not to run government or bad governance. The key actors of bad governance and put all of them as prime exhibits of that in this center for, for change. One love, Delta 9 family. Welcome back to the flight and thanks again for flying Delta. 19 years of the AFC. Congratulations and thanks for your service to the nation. Viewers, Delta 9 family, you guys heard what the VP had to say right there about his comrades in the political arena in Guyana. You hear how combative Guyanese politics is. And that being the case, I think from my perspective, Jack Dio is one of the generals in the combat because he brings the heat to the opposition feet, allegedly. Every single press conference but guess what he's not the only person with gas and matches because we both to hear right now from mr freeman and he is exposing some damning allegations about top ranking members in the government right now he's exposing some details i'm telling you that we got to have a conversation about this in the comment section. We're going to hear right now from Mr. Freeman as he exposes what's going on on the ground and some very strong allegations towards none other than Mr. McCoy. Let's hear directly from Mr. Freeman. They do. They are corrupt. If they don't have big fat bank accounts in China or wherever it is, they are corrupt. That is what they are about. And for those of you who don't know, Kwame McCoy has uh, had his U.S. visa revoked as well after it came to light that he was soliciting sex from a little boy, a 14-year-old schoolboy. Those were serious allegations leveled against him. And on this tape here, of course, he denied that it's him. But all of you know that that's him. But he denied that that's not him. And listen to this here. And I'm just saying this to, to, to let you guys know that Jack Deo and, and, and Kwame and all of them, they have no moral authority. They're low lives. That is what they are. And should not be in any position there. In any position, and I do mean it, in Guyana. Which is not like something I'm accustomed to doing. Um, it would be the first thing for me. <laughs> Why you need to demonstrate that for what it is? Because I think we have a relationship where we do have one. <laughs> so, not a problem. <laughs> Yeah. So, uh, when possibly can we meet? 
Very possible. Yeah. Man, you're the one who have to tell me. You know, you see, I guess Friday would be a better day because my dad be going in the bush and the house will have for me around. Which house is that? His home. In London? No, in Georgetown. So, be, the house will be for me around, so I say you could probably come in the daytime and check before five. So, uh, in the daytime, somebody might uh, come, nah, my cousin might uh, come in the night to sleep. Uh, they might come from London, I don't know. I guess so, though, but it will probably be better in the daytime. <laughs> so, that's why uh, I'm telling you now, so you can possibly make time for that. I know, I'm not sure about daytime. I gotta watch it. But I don't understand if it's that we have a relationship. What is it that you're afraid about? I mean, I can understand. Advertise with us and put your product, project, or campaign in front of millions of viewers all over the world and in Guyana. WhatsApp us on 347 762 665 or contact us via our website delta 9 media both contacts are on the screen that number again 347 762 665 um, yeah there gonna be some thinking about something that is legal or whatever it is but actually family came and they complained his uncle and everyone including his mother and they complained to me the matter was reported to prime news as well and the conversation was recorded directly uh, through Kwame's phone at the office of the president that is when it happened and so Kwame cannot run or beat around the bush I am making this public right now that is why I'm saying that regardless of what he would want to say, that that's not his voice, I am saying that that is Kwame McCoy. All right, so moving on, we're just showing you the type of individuals who are in government, so to speak, and pretend as though they're all upright and they are professional and they mean well. They're not. They're 
bunch of dirty rags. Now, look, let me make this clear. If Kwame or Jack Day want to do whatever they have to do at the back of underneath the cathedral in the nights, that's their business. Just do it and, and, and hide and do your stuff, right? But um, and, and this 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 is not being homophobic here at all. People are entitled to their own lifestyle. And people should not be attacked as a result of their lifestyles, mind you. So let me just make that as clear as possible. However, uh, you cross the mark, you cross the line when you interfere with little boys. You cross the line when you abuse little boys sexually, your little girls sexually, you cross the line. And there are too many of these vagabonds in the PPPC regi regime who go around and they solicit sex from minors, whether little girls and little boys. We're hearing some sad reports, and I'm not sure how these things are not being smuggled to Jack Deere, that there are reports that little boys uh, or boys who are working at DPI and NCN are fed up because the allegations are that Kwame McCoy is soliciting sex from them or is pressuring them for sex. These things are unacceptable. We cannot have that happening at all. And so we've got to call a spade a spade. And so these are the things that any real government will stamp out. Sexual harassment on the job. You have senior installed ministers soliciting sex from little girls, little boys, uh, workers, and all these manner of things. They have to stop at some point in time. And people need leaders in a country who could focus on real issues, not leaders who are fascinated with certain things and that they, it, it is quite obvious as to what they are really and truly fascinated with. They just can't help themselves. Their bumps raise and they get ticklish and they, uh, they allow wigs and lipstick to get to them and blind their vision on being professional. And those are not the kind of leaders, so-called leaders. They're not the kind of individuals that should be leading a nation. And let me just bring you guys to something at Queens College. They had their anniversary the other day. Anything, anything came out of it that we can remember other than a, a fourth former or fifth former just dancing. And, and don't get me wrong, it's good dancing people must enjoy themselves young people should enjoy themselves too but there are two things that came out of that queen's college stuff the little guy that was uh, just dancing up to steel pan and stuff and kudos to that little guy and that is what a government an installed government minister shared uh, the minister of human services that's all they shared the little guy dancing up and that was it what was the message other than that the other message that Irfan Ali, Install Ali, Install Ali, the message that Install Ali sent, speaking to those QC... Uh, so those are the allegations. And then earlier, we heard what the VP had to say. Delta 9 family, Guyana is in a place where we the youth, the ones that own the future got to make sure that we turn the situation in our country to the better we can't have these type of things lurking around and dealing with these type of back and forth and conflict all the time there's a lot of wealth in the country there's a lot of opportunities that persons are not taking full advantage of or can't take full advantage of because of what's going on on the ground. Right now, we can hear directly from the persons in Guyana, from the regular man in the street, and they're gonna be explaining the things that might be bothersome to them in their everyday life while they're going through all of the systems that politicians and the bigger heads would control and put in place to run the country. So let me hear directly from the everyday Guyanese and check the pulse of one of the richest countries in the world right now. Let's hear directly from Garden Mosley. 
and the Guyanese people. And if you haven't already, buddy, hit that subscription button so that you can be updated every single time this flight is taking off. Come here, yeah, they make some concrete road here. Yeah. But you're finding, you're seeing a set of stone and the, the cement on like powder, it's like dust. Oh no. This yeah, is it pleasant? The stretch of the road when they make, and the other half, they're good, but the other half is shaved powder and, and brick is seen. And which part of Pleasance is this? This, this is in good for acting here. Oh, good for acting. From, from a bridge separate Pleasance and Spandam, uh -huh. right through the first scan in good for acting in the new scheme area. Oh, they need to check that back. Yeah, and I, I like this thing to this nation. With all these resources before I, this nation never benefit from nothing at all, right? Right now they're getting oil. Nothing still at all. And I want to know this nation if them them is animals or what. Me know what really going on with these people in this place. Mm -hmm. Nothing at all being getting in everybody's silence, everybody suffering. Now Nigeria saying we gotta go in the street and fight. Right? I don't know if all Maduro criticizing what they're doing. All them rest of international country criticizing. And I don't know who I'm with this nation. If them is animals or our brother. I'll hear you this morning. Thanks for calling in. What's happening in your community this morning? Welcome to Jumpstart. Hi, good morning, Gordon. How are you? I am well. How are you doing? Happy Diwali. Yeah, I was um, I wonder if you know, if you, if you didn't want to take him a call, so because every morning I call in a getting caught, caught off. Anyhow, <laughs> I was in the B Fields of Fire area last night. Mm. It's a uh, what is it called? King, King of King Street. Well, I don't want to see the servant of servant streets. <laughs> this is one of our oldest housing communities. Yeah. And the condition of the roads in that area is deplorable. I could imagine what those people go through when the rain is falling. I was in Zila the other day, and all them little fine roads, even we would call a little dark, everything well paved and all of that, humps and everything. And these they just come and supply and nobody paying attention. I do hope that they will look into that. The second thing is, concerning a topic yesterday that you had, there are many policemen and as they say custom officers, too, people go into the jobs and they're willing to throw the line and what they were taught in the training school, they go to put it out there. But when they're exercising their duty, you pull in somebody, Somebody bringing a set of illegal cars or a chicken or do you pull in somebody? Bob, the people make a phone call, they're gone. So they are encouraging corruption in this place because when people are willing to do work and then you're being sidelined mm. for promotions and all the people come in, they don't know nothing what they're doing, then they want the idea and they're taking control of everything. So I don't know. Corruption, this administration is wicked. And the word of God says when the wicked Rain, the people suffer, and that is what is happening in our nation today. Thank you. Thanks, calling in this morning. The numbers to call this morning 223 3932. You can also dial 223 3856. Give us a call on the radio right now and bring us so much. Bless. Good morning, and good morning to all radio listeners and my Indian brothers and sisters who are out here. Good so morning. The last word in Port This would never do. Cars don't go in there at all. These people are walking in with all the baggage and cutting through from Maka Drive. To other people yard to reach to their destination very easy. This road just forgotten. There's the only road in King they'll never, ever, ever do it. Never touch. And I would like the ministers, them who are listening, because I know they're listening to jump start. They could come in and get started, get the road do in Maka Drive, Cainville. As well as the last road in North Sophia, where my mother's living, it never do. It never do. I would glad to just get these roads fixed, you know, and let me just get a clean and green Guyana. Thank you so much for having me this morning, Mr. Moses. Thanks, calling in this morning. That you access to Marker Road. Yeah. And I don't know if you know, but they're currently redoing the bridges. Yeah, I saw some work there, and they have a little, a little strip, like a little, I don't know what that is, mm -hmm. just cross over that canal. I saw that. Yes. Yeah, so they're currently, they currently dismantled Fourth Bridge, mm -hmm. Third Bridge, and they're currently doing Second Bridge. Now my thing is, 
I'm all for development. I don't mind you redoing the bridges. Yeah. But why are you redoing all three? At, at the, the same, same time. time. Yeah. Persons that live in Third Bridge, we cannot drive over there anymore. The persons can't drive over Third Bridge anymore. They have to go all the way around use and to access their homes from Second Bridge. Now, Second Bridge was in a more deplorable state than Third Bridge was, but they still decided to dismantle Third Bridge. So I, like, I don't, a vehicle can literally fall too, and we don't want that. Yeah. Second Bridge right now. That's how bad it is. But they dismantled Third Bridge. You can't drive over Third Bridge, but they're leaving you to drive over Second Bridge that was in a more deplorable state yeah. than Third Bridge. I don't understand what they're doing. And the position of Second Bridge too, it's right in front of somebody's house. It's not in line with the main road. They're putting it next to the old bridge. That doesn't make much sense. That makes no sense to me. I don't understand what they're doing. Yeah. And the fact that they're doing it now when the Christmas season is about to stop, when people, and right now no work is being done. They're stalled. Yeah. Nobody's doing anything. Huh. I'm hoping the Minister of Works, or I don't know, or if it's the Ministry of Housing, if that's another country, they can go and see what's going on there. Because I saw, I was in the area on Sunday, and mm -hmm. I saw they moved the bridge completely, just left like a little walking strip. And yes. you know, you, you got to balance yes. yourself on this strip or you're in the canal. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't get no barriers to the right nor left. <laughs> yes, so it's ridiculous. I live in Third Bridge. I have to walk all the way around to get out to Second Bridge. It's it's inconvenient. Yeah. The, the residents. Yeah, they should have they, they should have thought about that. You know, do one, complete do that one, one at the time. then move down yes. the line, move down the line. But you can't just cut off people completely. That's what just they, they The yeah. people that live at Fourth Bridge have to come out till at Fifth Bridge. No. They're inconveniencing people. What about the ones that don't drive? Mm, that's a headache. Uh, yeah. I hear you this Martin. morning. Enjoy your Diwali. <laughs> you too. Have a good day today. You too. Bye. I was waiting for somebody to call in from her still and raise that issue because I, w I was left surprised by it where they just dismantle all of these bridges and now, you know, the only access is you got to walk across these very fine beams that they have over the canal. you gotta, you know, you got to be like a... An Olympic gymnast to balance yourself on that balance beam and that's simply not good enough if you're gonna be doing bridges people are happy for the development but one it should not inconvenience people that bad and it should not be unsafe too because that is unsafe for people to cross over that as it is right now you know repair one bridge so people have access to that one then you move down the line repair that second one then you move down and follow these strict timelines because it's affecting people they go to dismantle these things and then they just leave it like that you ain't seen the contractor back for weeks, you know, and it's just left like that. I've been raising the issue of the railway embankment where all that sand, tons upon tons of sand was just dumped at the side of the roadway for whatever expansion they're doing months now and just left there. And those folks in the area, they got to deal with all that sand blowing into their homes. You know, God forbid there's some young children in the homes with asthma or some older folks with some other illness. It's going to be crazy. And they've got to do a better job at that. If you're going to bring material to a site, you better be ready to start the work. But packing up a site with material, tons upon tons, just leaving it at the side of the roadways, that's not good enough. And we've got to do a better job at managing our resources. If some folks start going on fetch, really send out to build a house and thing, there's another story altogether. 653 across the country. What's happening in your community? Call us now on the radio, 223-3932. This is Jumpstart. Good morning to you, caller. Good morning to you. Happy Diwali to you, too. The what? It's ridiculous, especially if you're driving to turn on like you're going down of these yeah that the traffic that's coming from the other side you can't turn and they're coming at the same time yeah and um another thing is going on in my community garden minister ministry of human service when you would have applied for public assistance mm -hmm. and you got the first six months they're putting you up to the board and they're making a, a overnight decision that okay you fit enough to make it on your own now Garden every day you go in the market is a, is a price up 
you know, five hundred is a thousand of garden. No matter how you're working for salary garden, it's making it. It is tough. It's yeah. God on faith. And they and they're telling you, paying is normally this is supposed to be till the child is at least eighteen or probably finish school. Hmm. This is ridiculous. I hope the Minister of Human Services is listening because it's not easy as a single parent and when to be paid transportation every two mornings. The schools need a fee or something like that. So it isn't easy. It's not like single parents plan to be single. Nobody plans for that. Hmm. But then if there's a system in place, why people want to shortcut it? Yeah. Someone else complained about that the other morning about uh, public assistance and them telling uh, the person that their sister can work and help provide for them, and that's garden, not right. I, garden, I don't know. I stay with Garden, you come and check me for it, and I'm out in the side. Hmm. <laughs> oh, yeah. I hope they listen and, and look into this. Come yeah. next year. And I hope things get better for you, too. Yeah, Garden, trust in God. I hear you this morning. <laughs> Thanks to God again. Yeah. It is tough for a lot of folks out there, and I'm hoping, you know, as the government tries to do for people, they're going to, you know, get to understand what people are going through in their individual homes and see how best you can assist those who might need more help uh, than some others. I think that is something they've got to pay keen attention to. There are a lot of folks facing a tough time. They got a job, but these prices. You know, they're out of control in the marketplaces. They're, you know, landlords are raising the rent left, right, and center. So they're dealing with that. Uh, you know, you ain't getting anything fancy in your house, but you're getting a fancy electricity bill. And then GWI, they smiling for a while. Uh, so, you know, you got to look at all those things and how best people can be assisted and those who are really in need of it. You know, that they, they, they receive the assistance uh, that can be offered to them. Good morning to you, caller. Welcome to the program. This is Jumpstart. Yeah, good morning, sir. Good morning. Um, it's mostly a concern of mine. Now, a couple of weeks ago, when two females drowned at the creek along the suicide highway, mm -hmm. they said things were put in place. Nothing. For them to look into that you had life yards, life rings, and portions, you know, being around the area to look to see when portions are in the water. Now, maybe things were put in place, but now things are happening that I don't like. I passed here 715 last night and person in the creek still bathing. Hmm. Now the management or the, the persons in charge of that area. So see well after five thirty or six nobody's supposed to be here. Now who gonna look after them when they're in the creek at that moment, at that time? Nobody. Well there are people living in the area who use the creek for bathing and swimming and you know there it's a public area so you really can't tell them they can't swim in the creek after a certain hour because they live in the community they live in the areas I think people just got to be careful and you know if you know you can't swim don't go in the water at all do like me sit on the sideline but I don't think you can expect uh, them to have people sitting there over overlooking a creek we got scores of creek all across the country um, I think people have to take that personal responsibility more. When there are big events, you have lifeguards and duty and so, but there are people who live all along the highway who access those creeks uh, to, you know, to do their washing or to do their bathing or whatever. You can't just tell them they can't come back and swim after 5.30. I think that is a personal responsibility. And parents have got to look out for their children too when they go to those areas. All right, but what I mean is um, 7.15 in the night and then... What really yeah, man, little, my attention is yeah, that man, you're, you know, doing, you're doing a little bit out there with candles and maybe some ritual going on or something. And no, man, you, I, I don't know. The you, authority you, is supposed you, to you, the authority, man. You, you pass a little skinny dip session. Those are dead in a movie. <laughs> 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 yeah, but I don't think so because, uh, you know, this is some time limit, man. <laughs> who's gonna look after those persons in there? No, that's why that's what I'm saying. It's a, it's a personal responsibility. But don't, once you see two candles out there in the middle, in the middle of the late in the night, there's a little skinny dipping session. Keep driving <laughs> every night. That one or two nights, I tell you, this place is hot in the day. <laughs> <laughs> you just gotta hope they're careful, you know. But when the place right, hot, right, you know, so have a nice day. You get your girlfriend to cool down. <laughs> Two, two, three, three, nine. <laughs>
232 you can also call 2233856 this is jumpstart to 94 number one good morning to you carla welcome to the program good morning gordon hey good morning sir how you doing i'm all doing okay what I'd like to see them do is um, in Festival City North, mm. um, to the exit, they could build a road going straight over into Gaia, because there's space there that the road could be, be, be done there. Instead, yeah. you got to go in all the way around Turning Point to actually reach into Gaia. Eight Butterfly Sea Moss Powder. Take your daily routine to the next level. Natural vegan superfood powder, essential multivitamin powder made just for you. The four names were made public at that meeting that myself and Kathy had in relation to um, this incident. It is very well known. So don't tell me that I didn't deport four Russians. They were caught talking to Jagdeo in suspicions in relation to the elections. I could not have gotten what they were talking about. And so I decided, look, look, look. If you don't have that, the police from Special Branch and all of that, send them people away. The file was sent to the DPP with a number of recommended charges and the charges took place. Think, and the magnitude of the charges have been mind blowing to them. These are the same people who are saying nothing will happen. So now we have gone from that, oh, so to the entire police force. This shows the system is working. So the system is working. There you go, Kaitro News. Former Attorney General and Minister of Legal Affairs, Anand Nanlal, was yesterday categorically denied any involvement in the assassination of political activist Courtney Cameron and said that the that an that an ex bodyguard of his who police have detained was hired several days after Cameron's death. And that turned out to be a lie. I spoke to the police.